right I've now got the heads made on this animatronic it's going to the uh, Mad Museum in Stratford-on-Avon what I want to do is now fit the eyes in so they, they stare when it looks around so I've got the parts I've got the eyes two sizes I've got the little axles there's a hole inside the head there where this little uh, pivot will go in and then this goes on to this part which I've made and painted blather 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 did this on the bandsaw just by hand cut the parts so first of all we need to uh, well, I need to get this part into that part which it's not as easy as it sounds because there's very little tolerance there and you've got to try and find a very small hole. Oh, made it in one. So that's one side done. Now I've got to get the other side in, which may be a challenge. Sometimes they go straight in, sometimes they don't. But this time I'm lucky. that's gone in a little bit of brass sticking out there so what I'm going to do is little sanders great for this sort of thing so we just good so first job done we've got that uh, fit it's fit. so this is going to go into the uh, hole of the head another tricky operation first of all we've got to put the pivots for the eyes on let's have a look I've made some little nylon pivots for the eyes if you can see those just drilled them there and then I sanded it down to make a flat surface and then drilled another hole into the bit there so that the eye part can go through so let's have a look. Good, pop that through. Cut it off to the right size. Get those sharp edges off. Good, nice and flush now. So. What we need now is to put these two little roller things on there. Just hang those on. Bite my lip because it's difficult. So, how it works is that when pushed up, it, these move forwards. So now another tricky part, we've got to insert this inside the head. The easiest way to do that is to take the head off. I can do that. There we are. I try not to glue this to things together until the last moment so everything's a friction fit. There's the hole at the bottom that this pin, wooden pin, has got to fit in. So of course we've got to try and get that in at the same time as keeping these parts on. It's a bit of a nightmare. Just takes a lot of patience. What I need to do is just file that bit off as well. Right, let's have a look. Hope all this is in focus because I don't want to have to do it again. On the right way around, the pins for the eyes are going to be slung underneath. That seems to be the way they fit. Ah. 
add it back to front. Right then. So here goes. I need to now drop this pin as a friction fit into the hole, which sometimes works pretty easily. Yep, I think we've got it in one. Good. Now, as you can see there, back there, and those pivots are there. Now, all we need to do is get the eyes connected onto there. Another tricky bit now is now sometimes I do it with a pin already in the eye. The problem I have this time is that the eye and then push it through from the back. But the problem is there's no room because the eyes are too far apart and there's not room at the back. So I've got to come in this way. I've got one falling off there. Right. So let's have a look. So how I'm going to do this is actually thread the whole length of the wire through from the back. Bring this forwards. It takes the patience of a saint to do this sometimes. Right, push the wire through. Now as you see the eye's coming through the eye. I just put a slight crimp in the end there so that this grips inside the eye better. So that now goes onto the eye. Find the parallel pliers. There. Right, push the eye on. Right. Now we've got the eye on there. Now, in theory, it should go through, but it's a bit of a tight fit. Make sure we've got the right eye, because one's a little bit bigger than the other. I think I might try the other eye in there. Give me a second. Pull that one off. Look of determination on my face. No, that one's even tighter, I think. Hang on. That's nice and loose. Right then, let's have a look. nearly there. Great, that's fallen off. I suppose if it falls off it should go back again as well, shouldn't it? That's being really troublesome. It doesn't seem to want to work. Now the other one's fallen off. I think I might just make that socket a little bit bigger. I'm using the prox on here. Just change the bit. I think similar to the Dremel. Proxon. I quite like them. A small burr on the end of that. Just put a new one on. Collets. They're okay, but unfortunately, all these things have different um, diameters. So you have to keep changing them. Right, it's in place here. Good. Right, then, so what we'll do, we'll just ease the back of that a little bit. Taking a bit out of the back of the socket. And it's really difficult to see why that came off. 
Well, there we are. Aha! Got it back on. Right, find the eye again. Put it back on. Push it in. off again. So considering how difficult it was to get it on, it's amazing that it keeps coming off. Once the eye is in place it shouldn't come off again. This can be very well, as you can see, can be very time consuming sometimes. It's one of those things where you don't really know how long it's going to take. You need to have all your bits around you. in place. Let's just tack that with a little bit of glue. These micro tips are great. You don't even need to put a cap on the glue, it seems to keep quite nicely. And, uh, good. Great stuff, super glue, isn't it? It dries so quickly. There's one eye done. You just need to do the next one now, but that one's working quite nicely. So one down, one to go. Once I do these things, I end up play, playing with them. So stairs and stairs. Doesn't take much for the impression uh, staring. Good, one down, one to go.